Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 8, Episode 5, aka Armageddon Part 5, also known as the mid-season finale for The Flash and the concluding episode of the Armageddon crossover event. So, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode was huge. Obviously, this is the final episode of Armageddon. Armageddon has been on for five episodes, so five weeks in a row. And now it's finally come to an end. And honestly, it's come really fast. But I have really, really liked all the episodes of Armageddon. It's always had me intrigued, and I can't wait to see what actually happens next. We have lots of returning faces coming after Armageddon. We have Bart and Nora. We'll talk about them towards the end of the video because there is a big teaser for them returning. And also you have returning faces like Eddie Thorne and also Ronnie Raymond who is going to be showing up in the next couple of episodes when The Flash returns in March. Yes, it is a long break after the mid-season finale. And remember guys, we're going to be going absolutely nowhere. There's going to be daily Flash videos up until then. Obviously, we're going to talk about Superman Lois which comes back for season 2 on January 11th. We've got the new show Naomi. So if you guys are interested in content... I'll be making it, and please be sure to watch all of that. But in the meantime, I'm going nowhere with Flash content. So, let's go ahead and get into this episode. So, near to the start of the episode, Thorn goes to CCPD. And it's here that Thorn attacks some of the officers. And now, it's clear that Thorn is after something, and he's not just trying to, you know, hurt the officers because he has no true intentions for doing that. However, his reasoning is he's trying to cause a scene. He's trying to get the attention of Barry and he wants to do it in the middle of public so he has witnesses to what he's about to ask Barry. But before Barry shows up, we have the return of Mia Smoke, aka Mia Queen. They sometimes go back and forth on that. In the synopsis they said Mia Queen, but normally we say Mia Smoke. Anyway, so she's back and she's from the future, obviously. And she is on the look out for her missing brother, William, and we'll explain a bit more in regards to that in just a moment. But at the start, she shows up, she swipes Thorn off his feet, asking him where is William, basically like Green Arrow would do. And in reference to Mia as the Green Arrow, Thorn says, the great Green Arrow. So I think this teases the idea that in the future, she is potentially even greater than Oliver as the Green Arrow and obviously someone like Thorne would know that so I feel like they definitely chose their words very carefully right there so I think that's definitely a big teaser and so she's like where is my brother and Thorne has had enough and he slams her against the wall and he's about to kill her phasing his hand but that's at the point where Barry shows up and saves Mia and Thorne reveals to Barry that he needs him to save him from actually disappearing so this is the reason why he's caused the scene to get Barry's attention and to prove a point, I guess. Although really, I don't really understand why he would have to cause a big scene like that. I get that he wants Barry's attention, but why couldn't he do that like in the middle of Star Labs or something? Okay, let's move on to the next thing. So, Mia obviously is back from the future. We have some more details. So, she's after William, who has been taken for two years. And that was the last time she saw her during the Green Arrow and the Canaries backdoor pilot. We get flashbacks to that episode, which is obviously a nice callback. And she's pretty much had no luck for an entire two years. But now she's made a connection finally, and this connection is somehow linked to Thorn. And this is because there is a time trace which she followed and somehow it led her to 2021 and directly to Thorn. That's where we pick up from. And although we don't get any concrete evidence as to what Thorn is to do with William's kidnapping, somehow it's related to time travel. And so obviously the big question by the end of the finale is, what are they going to be doing with Mia? Are we going to see Mia again? Because in this episode we don't see William. Now we knew that they were going to be dealing with William's kidnapping in this episode. And yes, they reference it and they make a little bit of progression, which we'll get into a bit later. But at the same time, they don't really do much of it. So it leaves a big door open to explore this. And do they have other plans? 
You would think they have other plans if they bring it up in such a big manner and don't put like a neat bow on it because we kind of thought, oh, Mia's going to show up, they're going to put a neat bow, they're going to wrap up this William storyline that was left hanging when Green Arrow and the Canaries wasn't picked up. But maybe they have plans for the next crossover and that's when you'll see the return of both Mia and William as William is found. I don't know if that is the plan, but what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, at the start of the episode, Damien Dark is back. He is with Barry, and obviously this is because of the timeline and the way it's shifting. He wasn't instantly erased, and, you know, with Thorn, he wasn't instantly erased too, so that's why he's not completely gone yet. And so, moving on from that, we have Barry, who explains the timeline changes from 2031 to Team Flash. Chester is given the tech that he had in the future. It seems like Barry remembered exactly what Chester did, and so Barry quickly made it, or did he time travel to the future? I don't know. I would say he probably made it, because it would have been much more safe. But also, Joe is thankful, Iris is thankful, everyone's thankful for Barry's heroics and, you know, changing the timeline, resetting it as best he can. Obviously, we know, because this is the Flash, there's going to be, like, big repercussions for everything that has happened, and the end of the episode definitely teases this. Okay, let's move on. So Mia has been looking for William, and obviously we get lots of Felicity references in this episode. We get a couple Oliver references in regards to Mia's comments of wanting to kill Reverse Flash, and basically Iris brings up the idea that Oliver in the past once went down that path, and nothing turned out good when he went down a killing spree. Obviously, Oliver has killed quite a lot of times during his time on Arrow, but obviously they want to craft a new legacy for this new Green Arrow that is completely different and, you know, not soaked with blood, I guess. And the Felicity reference is in regards to Mia not wanting Felicity's help because she won't understand the path that she has taken. But by the end of the episode, Mia is more open to contacting Felicity and she reveals that she's going to need her hacking skills and so she's going to go after her mum for some help. And so let's move on to the next thing. So Thorn is trapped inside Star Labs in that energy force field that they have. And obviously he's there most of the episode up until the ending. And he tries to talk Caitlyn out of letting him die. And so Caitlyn doesn't want to save him. He reveals after a couple of minutes of him talking and trying to convince her. And then she goes on to tell Barry this, that she thinks Thorn has to die. And Barry pretty much agrees straight away, and so does Iris. And so there is lots of split opinions in Team Flash, but everything is completely unraveled as Joe shows up and he enters and he's like, Barry and Iris, what are you doing? Come outside right now and I'm going to talk to you. And so he reveals that Barry probably has a way to save Thorn, and Barry reveals he does have a way to save Thorn, and this is obviously by taking Reverse Flash's speed away. But as Joe does this talk to Iris and Barry, he's so intense. I, I really think Jesse L. Martin does a great job here. And he was definitely missed in the first four episodes of Armageddon because he's a great actor. And it's a shame that we didn't like have him go back and forth against Tom Kavanagh because they are always great together. But nevertheless, it's always great to have Joe around and I loved having him back. And so let's continue with this. So why did Reverse Flash create a Reverse Flash point? We have Barry confronting Reverse Flash as Thorne reveals that it's all about his need to destroy Barry's life. And that two centuries from now, in the future, they meet for the very first time. And so obviously two centuries from now, that's quite a long time, right? That is literally like 200 years into the future. Somehow Barry's still around. I would presume it would have something to do with time travel. But they meet for the first time and he finds a way to process speeds. And obviously this is by creating the negative speed force. Is probably what he discovered at this time. Because I don't think he was ever able to properly tap into the normal speed force like Barry. Because he was never struck by lightning. And so, just as he was about to present himself as a hero to the world, Barry showed up and saved the crowd and Thorne was humiliated and it was at that point that he realised he had to become faster than the Flash and he had to become better and eventually he realised he had to become the reverse, 
the opposite of Barry. And so this is the reason that he created the reverse flashpoint. It was the ultimate and best way to get rid of the flash for good and for reverse flash to win. Obviously, he's tried so many times in the past and in the future. Again, we don't know exactly what version of Reverse Flash we're dealing with right here, but you can assume most of the versions we've fought in the past have all been the past experiences of this Reverse Flash. And I have to agree, I think his Reverse Flash point was totally the best thing he's ever done and the most powerful move that he's ever done against Barry because he completely flipped Barry's life upside down by creating all of this and manipulating things behind the scenes to make Barry think, number one, that he was insane and that he had to get rid of his powers, which would make Reverse Flash more powerful than him. And obviously that's his main goal, to become more powerful than the Flash, to be faster than him. So he's already won there. But then on top of that, he's taken over his friends. He's married to his wife. He's literally beat him in every single way. But luckily, Barry in Armageddon Part 4 was able to stop him by running so fast that he time traveled back in time and reset the timeline to what we see in this episode and obviously nothing is completely perfect but the timeline begins to set in throughout this episode and that's why you have people like Damien Dark who is still around despite the timeline changing and so this is at the point where Despero returns and he makes Barry pursue killing Reverse Flash because he's definitely 100% sure that this is the only way to assure Reverse Flash's absolute death and Despero believes this and he thinks he has to die because he could still create Armageddon if Reverse Flash or any version of himself is alive in the future. And so I have to point out at this point, I think Despero isn't actually that good. Now. I liked him at first, I thought he was cool when they first introduced him, however these last couple of episodes the main villain has been Reverse Flash and every time Despero shows up you're like, oh, hi Despero. And it's clear that Despero is mainly there just to be a plot point to amp up the stakes in terms of all of what's happening with Reverse Flash and Team Flash because he's the one putting pressure on everyone. And so he's basically a device for exposition and a device to add tension to some of the scenes. And I have to say, I don't like his voice. Every time he shows up and is very inconsistent, I think that's my main problem. He has a weird kind of echoey voice that they've overly edited. And like I said, it doesn't happen in every scene. So it just sounds weird. And I get it that they like to do that with villain voices. But this is just coming from like a normal human-like alien that definitely doesn't sound any different and can sound normal. So I don't get why he does the echoey voice when he's talking aloud. I 100% get it when he's in someone's head. That might be what you would imagine an echoey voice to be like. But just when he's out in the open, I don't think it makes much sense. So that's one of my nitpicks in regards to Despero. So as Team Flash decide, to not kill Reverse Flash and actually save him, Despero listens in and we get an extra dump of exposition about how mad he is about Team Flash not going through with this and how he's going to succeed and this leads on to Mia Smoke who is just like walking down the halls of Star Labs, primed and ready to be a prime candidate for Despero to take over and surely enough, Despero takes her over, her eyes glow red and she becomes his beacon in Star Labs. It's at this point that Barry and Despero go outside and they're about to ensue in a big fight and Barry reveals that he thinks Despero has been lying all this time and that he was never a hero on his own world but he was a killer and he was banished. Which definitely is true and Despero pretty much proves it throughout the rest of this episode with his absolute disregard for humanity and absolutely anyone and it's especially telling because he says he's a hero and he's trying to save everyone but he's willing to wipe out an entire city just to stop reverse flash so it doesn't really add up but you kind of get the idea yeah he was definitely lying and Barry is right about this another nitpick that I have again talking about the way that Despero talks and is written he says 
I was right about you all along, Flash. You are humanity's enemy. And so, it's just the fact that he's always talking to himself that's annoying. But then also, he's constantly calling Barry Flash. And he says it like 10 times in a sentence. And it feels extremely repetitive. And also just the fact that he's always just there to warn Team Flash. And every time he goes in for a kill, he fails. Obviously, apart from that, like death scene that never actually went through because the timeline was changed so yeah i don't know it just all feels a bit weird with despero i'm not the biggest fan of him as you can tell but let me know what do you think about despero in the comments down below i much preferred all the reverse slash stuff and him working behind the scenes and so back in star labs we have mia obviously a conduit for despero who goes around and she attacks all of team flash caitlin's shot she quickly recovers it seems by the end of the episode i don't know how but that's just a little nitpick anyway it doesn't really matter about that but iris and cecile force her to fight back against despero to make her overcome his powers so it's pretty clear that despero actually isn't that powerful and that pretty much if anyone sets their mind to it and thinks about something that they're extremely passionate about they have the chance to defeat despero and somehow in this scene, Cecile was able to transfer like some of her powers into Mia. And that's partially how Despero was defeated. And so Despero obviously surprised again. Although it's not much of a surprise by now considering that he's been defeated many times by Cecile and some of the other characters. Basically Mia's overcome and she's back to normal. And so Barry outside again fights Despero. There's a couple cool CGI shots here and there with Barry duplicating himself and fighting him in the street. Sometimes it's a little bit like sock puppety, a bit fake. Nevertheless, I think it was a pretty cool fight scene. This leads into him trying to wipe out the entire city to kill Reverse Flash to prevent a future Armageddon by wiping out, you know, just a certain select amount of people. And so. The timeline is resetting in a few minutes, so obviously they have a big deadline to hit, so they must stop Despero from destroying the city, and so the PED material is revitalized and reused by Chester to create a new thing for the Flash, and this new thing is none other than the Flash's golden boots. Now this is something that we've waited for for a long, long time. People have been speculated, when is the Flash going to get his golden boots? Well, now is the time, and that was a really cool scene. It was kind of like the scene in Pulp Fiction, where they have something in the box, and it glows. And at that point, I was like, hmm, it's gold. Oh yeah, he's getting the gold boots. So, then he ran out, and he went after Despero, and he's actually able to stop Despero. And he severs his connection to the Flame of Pytar by using his boots, literally kicking him in the face. And obviously that's using the PED technology in the boots to stop him. And so he's disconnected from the Flame of Pytar and is destroyed. And so Despero vows revenge at this point before he vanishes into flames. Now, I don't think we're going to see Despero again, but I kind of get that. You know, maybe if he ever came back, he would be after Barry and he would be like a fully fledged villain rather than having some excuse to show up. He would literally be just going after Barry because of what he did to him. And so moving on from this, Barry saves Thorn by blasting him with his speed force energy. And so Barry is very happy. He says he saved his life and Thorn is extremely mad because he says Barry just took his life by taking his speed which is everything to him and that was explained earlier in the episode it's such an important factor in his life that now thorn is completely useless and i guess he's pretty much lost and so what does that leave him with i don't know and when will he return how will he return and how the hell is he going to create the negative speed force well he's going to have to create something because he's not going to be able to tap into the normal speed force when he returns but for now, Thorn is locked up in Argus. This is a big move because Thorn is never locked up. He's always out there, but this time he has no speed and he's in prison. So I don't know how he's going to return, but we'll have to wait and see. But just after this, Damien Dark returns 
Obviously, there is questions about how he's still around considering that the timeline is fully set. And so they're all at a party and at the point where he shows up, Mia puts a knife to his throat, obviously because of the Green Arrow history with Damien Dark. She naturally doesn't trust him. However, he proves his innocence and basically he's buddies with Barry now and he should have been erased from the timeline. And you get this nice talk with him and Joe and the fact that being a parent changes you for the better and so Joe talks to Damien who seems lost and it's clear he's still got a lot of work to do but he finds some answers shortly after as Damien disappears and he returns in this kind of dreamlike world where he sees his daughter Nora obviously that was really nice to see her return in a serious way in a way that's not to do with legends and after this out of nowhere back in reality Nora appears and so you can pretty much get the idea straight away what has happened. Damien Dark has sacrificed himself for his daughter so that Nora can exist in this new timeline and be alive. And so it's at this point that Joe shows up and takes Nora away to tell her a story. And so I think Joe really is the MVP of this episode because he's able to override a lot of stuff. And he's definitely got some very much needed clarity that... Barry 100% needed in this episode. Okay, so let's move on from here. So the symbol on the hosen, that is obviously Mia's and that William gave her back in the Green Arrow and the Canaries pilot. It's extremely important and apparently Iris has done some investigating of her own and she somehow, according to a source, has linked it to Berlin. And so Mia is going to see Felicity because she is in need of a hacker. And as mentioned earlier, this is the setup for a potential return of William and the rescuing of him, obviously. And maybe the return of Mia sometime in the future. Also, there's reference to Bart and Nora who drop in on them a lot in the present day. And she says you guys would get along very well. Again, this feels like a teaser for future episodes later down the line where potentially they could all team up and you know it would be like the kids of all of these superheroes take over from the original justice league members and that would be obviously very cool if it eventually happened but we've got the chester and allegra stuff which continues towards the end of the episode and killer frost comes up and she's like someone's got a crush and we're like yeah no kidding we literally had that set up last episode and I don't know, I thought it was a bit cringy. I was like, eh, does this really need to happen? And it just feels very forced still. So we have a final speech from Barry. And obviously this is the mid-season finale. And they just defeated Despero, defeated Reverse Flash pretty much for good. So there is a need for partying. And party they do. Before Barry gives his speech. And obviously it's all about what happened and you know what they're going to be doing forward and he thanks everyone and especially joe for being a great dad and so this is where we move on to the final scene of the episode so this is exactly pretty similar to the shining and the way that film ends however obviously it's a bit different in terms of the camera work but we go in and we go in and we go in we get closer and closer and closer and we have this photo of CCPD and some of the members of staff and who appear out of absolutely nowhere is two streaks of purple and yellow lightning revealing Bart and Nora added into the photo. This confirms it, Bart and Nora are returning and they're going to be time traveling and they're going to be tampering with the timeline according to the trailer which we'll do a trailer breakdown for later today. The timeline is in flux after Barry reset it and obviously Nora and Bart have been time traveling a lot so it could be to do with them as well and I think there's definitely going to be a big lesson to be learned in terms of time traveling and this is obviously a very permanent reset so seeing changes happen already like this it's definitely going to have big consequences as we move on down the line and so just before we end this video I have a couple of things I wanted to bring up so Armageddon as a whole I thought was very strong thought it had a good episode to start off with it definitely got me intrigued but I think when reverse flash came in and we got the big reveal and with you know Alex Danvers Batwoman and everyone it was a really cool way to start off the episode last episode but the episode before that had one of my favorite scenes of the entire crossover where Black Lightning and Barry 
come to terms with each other, but then Despero shows up out of nowhere and Iris is there with Dion and she's like, something's happened, someone's altered with time and so Barry runs to the future and Jefferson's like, run Barry run. So that was one of my favourite scenes probably of the entire crossover and as I mentioned before, Despero is more of a red herring and I think he's a bit weirdly utilised, I wouldn't say he's the best and definitely was one of the weaker parts of the crossover. And obviously I have my nitpicks here and there which I've talked about, especially with Eric because Eric's very good at pointing out some nitpicks that I actually end up agreeing with. And obviously this is to do with continuity and to do with like little slip ups here and there. But nevertheless, there is some very, very good stuff in this crossover and I think it made for five entertaining weeks of Flash episodes. Obviously it's a big shame that we're not going to be seeing more anytime soon. The next time we're going to get a Flash episode is in March, as I mentioned earlier in the video. But for now, at least we had a couple of nice episodes where we got the return of characters like Alex Danvers and all these other people from the other Arrowverse shows that are on or not on anymore. So it was very nostalgic overall. So yeah, Armageddon was good. And although there is some points like Mia which was never fully solved, like we never saw William in this episode. A lot has been teased for the future, and I think that's exciting to look forward to. I don't know when specific things will be exactly happening, but there is a lot to look forward to. So for now, thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry that this has been a long video, but I had a lot to talk about. So for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.